Hey there UK ADCers, don't EDC this knife in the UK unless you have a valid reason such as fishing, hunting, that kind of thing. This is of course a lock knife. Uh, it is the Kaiser Kalajin, or to give it its catchy title, the KI401 DT1. Uh, I purchased this from the now sadly closed Blades and Bows for $94.99. Uh, this was way back in January last year. Uh, sadly, they closed their doors because they were uncertain about the future of UK postage laws on knives. That means I was able to get this at a lovely price instead of paying the usual, I think it's £180 normally. Maybe even 190 I think this was a half off. So this is made by Kaiser, made in China. And it comes in your old style beige box which holds your black box which holds your camo pouch which holds the knife and a gray microfiber cloth with the kaiser logo on it uh, please note i have damaged the blade there with sharpening that was just me being stupid so please pretend those scratches aren't there otherwise this knife is in practically new condition so there you go uh, so, action on this thing. Oh, yeah. The reason I bought this one is because it is absolutely drop shut. And it's a flipper mechanism, or you can use either of these thumb studs just like that. Although I nearly never use the thumb studs, it's always the, the flipper. Because I, I don't really know why you would. So this is uh, bearings on this. Uh, these are ceramic bearings, actually. And you've got a TA captive pivot that's um, their old style pivot that some people really don't like. I think it suits this particular knife, although there are some Kaisers I think it looks a bit naff on. There's just a T8 this side, nothing on this side. And then these are all T6s. Oh, and uh, you also get a spare, like single one of these in the box in case you lose or strip a back screw. Which is quite nice to see. Uh, if you strip to two, though, you're sort of out of luck. This is uh, titanium handles, and they're all finished with this sort of DLC style, whatever that is. And you can see it's got a, a nice little texture to it, which is really, really quite nice. It feels lovely in the hand. You get yourself a lanyard hole there. Uh, this is, of course, a frame lock. And the lock goes to, what's that, about 60% with a uh, ceramic ball detent there. You have a pocket clip on this, which can be switched to do tip down if you uh, want to carry this tip down. It's not left hand, unfortunately, even though the blade is completely accessible with dual thumb studs or a flipper tab from left hand. Uh, of course, though, the frame lock is right hand only. So uh, that's that's sad a bit, but um, obviously it doesn't affect me. I'm right-handed, but for those that are, a bit of a shame. Grip on this, it's actually really quite nice. You get like a nice little groove here, a groove here, and then the rest of your fingers just sit here. You can sort of lock up into this flipper tab here, and there's some jimping here just to really put your thumb down that's fairly inconsequential, but... You know, it's it's there, it's not uncomfortable. What is uncomfortable is this here. Now that sucks a bit. Uh, this side is miles more comfortable to hold than the uh, pocket clip side. So uh, maybe it would be better as a tip down, but I don't know, I'm just so used to tip up now. But... Right, there you go. It doesn't go in my pocket often anyway, because obviously I can only carry this at home, so it's not a not a major issue really. Fit and finish on this overall is uh, actually fairly fantastic. I mean, um, it's not it's not got anything crazy going on. Like there's no, you know, it's an open back design, so there's no backspacer to fit in flush or anything like that. Uh, you know, the gaps between the blade and the the handle material is fairly even 
there's nothing that stands out on this like these are even the grinds fine on both sides so there's nothing to pick out uh, i'm sure there i'm sure there could be problems if you really look for them but i can't find any sharp edges or anything like that so i'd, I'd say this is actually a pretty fantastic knife for the money blade material on this is of course s35vn if you hadn't read that yet and edge retention on this um i mean look i i barely use this i've used it to break down a couple of boxes but keep in mind i'm in the uk and this is a lock knife so i'm barely it's not like i udc this so oh Yeah, it's all right. Billboarding, you do get your Kaiser logo, the Calagin S35VN, and the serial number there. If you, uh, for some reason, ever want the serial number on your knife or the model number or whatever that is, you get a nice big chopping choil, which is lovely. It's almost big enough to fit your finger in, really. But of course, there's no need for a finger choil on this since it's a, uh, a lock knife. So you can just hold it and not worry about that at all. Centering on this is, yeah, pretty damn good by the looks of it to me at least. And is there any blade play? There is nothing, not an ounce, and there's no lock rock either. The uh, blade shape is, of course, it's sort of like a weird curved tanto, and you, then you've got like the harpoon bit at the top here. Which is pretty cool, uh, you know. Obviously, you can put your thing, your thumb in this uh, groove bit here if you really want to choke up and do something, which I've never ever done with a knife. But I, you know, I can see people doing it. Like if you're carving wood or something, I don't know what you'd do with that, but it's an option, you know. Why not? But it's cool. It gives it like a nice little harpoon style sort of shape to the tanto. You got the swedge here. I think that's a, you know, quite a nice looking blade, if not the most useful. Uh, if you want to see uh, this knife with a more useful blade design, go and have a look at Blade Banker's sort of end of year collection 2019. He's got this exact knife, but with a better blade shape, as you might imagine. Do a little uh, size comparison for you guys. I'll put the stats on screen here for you. I'm just going to move the whole thing because I don't want it to black out against the, uh, the desk. So we've got a Benchmade 940. We've got a Spyderco paramilitary 2 and we've got the uh mini griptilian there so that's that's similar lock knives it's basically the same size as a pm2 so that's most people will understand that one um as for us in the uk i not a lot of people are going to see the point of buying a pm2 because we can't carry it so there's our equivalent spyderco the uk pk here's a knife that everyone should know it's just your standard Victorian Ox Wasami Knife Pioneer. And um, there's just a little one just to show how, <laughs> I don't know, I just like to put a small one on there just for a, a big size difference. So I'll do a quick disassembly of this boy. There we go. This really is tightening from this side, actually. There we go. So yeah, it looks to be ceramic balls. Oh, this does need a clean out, actually. I will. Uh, I'll give it one. But yeah, that's that's why it's so smooth. Just lovely ceramic balls in there. And they just fit quite nicely into oh look at that track as well yeah no wonder no wonder it runs so smooth let's give this whole thing a nice little wipe down inside there we go And as you can see, the pivot is captive, but only 
Only on this side and it's captive this way. Love you. Ah, oh, there we go. It's, it's a little bit hard to get in the UK now this way. In fact, I don't think you can even get this in the UK anymore. You can still get this over in America. I think it's Knife Works or something like that. And it's uh, quite expensive and that's on sale as well. So this isn't a cheap knife by uh, any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, you are paying for really nice, just absolute drop shot action. Oh, there we go. A nice big knife as you've seen i mean it's basically the same size as that pm2 uh, and it's a heck of a lot more comfortable than that pm2 is so you know if you if you're into that if you're into the blade shape it's a good one if you're not like i said there's other blade shapes it is all blacked out uh you can get this different different styles so you can get this silver handles you can get this with like weird splashes of color and things like that they were going were like crazy at that time kaiser with like different handle finishes and this was just the the dlc sort of i think it's dlc anyway um it might just be like painted stonewash or something but you know that's sort of like you finish throughout stonewash on the blade and then it's sort of like that stonewash onto the almost spider webbing but it's it is supremely comfortable and that, that pocket clip it's not a super issue unless you're really doing hard use, you know, um, which is probably the only time I use a knife like this because, of course, well, I suppose we're just breaking down a big old box. But I don't think the pocket clip would be an issue for just breaking down boxes. Value wise, um, if you're getting this at a decent price like I did, yeah, the value's completely there. If you're paying full whack for this, oh, this is in a real... A real bit of a stiff competition. There's a lot of knives you can get for that money. Uh, better ones, arguably, for less money. I mean, I don't know if I'd recommend this at full price. But that's up to you, again, uh, as it always is, of course. I'm only giving my sort of unsolicited opinion, really. But <laughs> that that's that. I, I think this is a lovely knife, though. It really is quite wonderful. Like I said, it's, it's nice and comfortable. It's It's got that wonderful drop shutty action nice cool looking blade shape that i like uh the one thing i would say about this knife uh, except for the pocket clip the pocket clip wants to just be bent down a bit more and the other big problem with this knife is this so when you move the frame lock over and then close it quite often i end up just smashing that into my thumb nail there and that that's not great i mean you have to get past the detent to get the uh drop shutty action going so it's nearly always just like without even pushing the blade look it just slams into my thumb and that's fine once or twice but after a couple of times oh hello it does start to hurt and now that's flicked back into the detent so it's worthless so you sort of have to use your thumb to stop it, like where it's just past the detent. So that that's my big problem with this. But overall, I think it's a it's a wonderful knife. It's it's sort of like the last hurrah. I got this with a bunch of others you might have seen on the receipt there from Blades and Bows back in January last year. And um, on that, I got the first knife I EDC'd, which I I don't have anymore. It was a sort of an imitation knife anyway. Uh, I got rid of that one. It wasn't great, but it was it was the first one I sort of EDC'd when I realised, you know, oh actually you can by law carry carry a knife in the UK as long as it's this and this, and that sort of started this whole YouTube journey for me. So that was part of that order, and I'm very happy with this knife. So thank you very much for watching. Cheers.